This movie was great. I'm just a little confused what the theme was. Was it... I think it's trust? They didn't say it enough. Whatever it is, they didn't say it enough. Hello everybody, welcome to Film Fireside. We'll be reviewing Raya and the Last Dragon. It came out into theaters this weekend. It is also on Disney+. Plus. If you are eligible to go see it in theaters, I highly recommend you go see it in theaters. Nothing but support for uh, movie theaters right now, so go see it in theaters if you can. We got to take our little baby to the theater, and I think an indication of how good it was is, sh is our little three-month-old was glued to the screen the entire time. <laughs> she loved it. She was just so engaged in it. Um, I think part of that was she's in a movie theater and was just like, holy crap, that screen is freaking huge so that was probably part of it but um she was very content and also she's a content baby so i guess you know whatever in a realm known as kumandra a reimagined earth inhabited by an ancient civilization a warrior named raya is determined to find the last dragon raya who is voiced very well by kelly marie tran you may recognize her as being rose from the last jedi she does so well in this by the way she does fantastic work in this she puts a lot of solid, believable, truthful emotion into Raya's voice. Raya is a very charming character and a very likable character, and we have Kelly Marie Tran to thank for that. So, haters gonna hate. Screw, s screw Star Wars fans. Raya and the Last Dragon fans, much better. Also featuring Aquafina uh, voicing the dragon Sisu throughout the film. This film, I, I, I think visually, is visually stunning. The very first thing I thought of was just how visually like pleasing this film was. Very, very beautifully designed. It's a very a fantasy based film and it was just good eye candy to enjoy throughout this entire film. And throughout this entire film, everything is very beautiful looking. I mentioned before how good Kelly Marie Tran is as Raya. I, I just think the writing for Raya's character, her motivation, and the type of person she is, is very well done. I feel very hooked into this realm, into this world that the first little bit creates and gets set up for us. And also the action in this film is so cool. And, and you, it's, that's kind of weird to say in like an animated series. However, this is just solid action. It's just really, really cool action that takes place. And my wife and I were like so into it as, <laughs> as some of the action scenes were going down. It's really, really cool. I think the dynamics of each character too is so, you're just so invested into that as well. Like the motivation for each character, it's, it, the, the stakes are heightened throughout this, throughout this movie and I, I'm really into that. You know, it's really, really, really nice. Like with any animated film, elements of the humor worked for me and others didn't. Aquafina is, she's a funny character, or she's a comedian and I, I get that. And her character in this attempts to be funny, she's usually not. That's my, that's kind of my take on it though. Maybe you, maybe you agree with me on that. That was something that kind of hurt the film for me. The quirkiness of her, of, of her character is, is resembles just the quirkiness of Aquafina and it didn't match the world, didn't match the universe. And there are times where like a character has done that and it, and it didn't match the universe and it's worked. I mean, for example, Eddie Murphy playing Mushu, that, quirkiness, the like modernized contemporary type of side character totally worked in Mulan. It served the story, it did not do so here. Another example, like Robin Williams is the genie in Aladdin. It's clear that, the story, that that's what they were going for. They wanted her to be very much the comedic relief in this. And a lot of times she wasn't, she was just kind of there and doing stuff that wasn't that funny. I don't know, and I can't say like everything wasn't funny. It was, it just, it just was, it was hit and miss a lot of time, and most of the time it was miss. Moving forward, I uh, wanted talking about the theme of this here, and I, even though my in the opening I mentioned what an element of what I think the theme is, that's I have more thoughts on it there, but I want to talk about that further. So I'm gonna put a little spoiler warning here, and I am gonna talk about that because it had a huge to do with my experience with the film. So from this point on, if you have not seen it, you've been warned. Come back and watch this part after you've seen Raya and the Last Dragon. But if you've seen it continue on. At the opening of this, I kind of mentioned uh, the theme of this, of this movie. I mentioned, you know, trust. However, I'm going to, I'm going to dive into that a little more and talk about that because I, I think at one point in the film, I began being like, geez, okay. Like it's very clear what the theme is here. And I even think from like the first few, few minutes of the film, I was like, okay, I kind of get the idea where this is going. The, the lesson to be learned by Raya and, the, and what her journey will be about and kind of the lesson she's going to come to. The execution of that was very odd to me. And it's so, they're just so on the nose about it the entire time. They're just shameless about what the theme of the film is. It reached a point probably in between the second and third act where I, I literally leaned into my wife 
And I was like, okay, so I'm confused. Is, is trust the theme here? Is that the theme? Uh, they really should say it like a lot more. And then as soon as I said that, <laughs> I swear the third act, every sentence is like, we gotta trust them. Well, but maybe we shouldn't trust them, but you should trust them. Maybe we should trust them. I don't know, should I trust them? It's literally like, like nonstop. And my wife and I were talking about it afterwards because it, it, it did reach a point where I was like, okay, it's so ridiculous that I'm like, okay, there may be like something more to this than, than just that surface level. Perhaps they were trying to execute something else in the process. And my wife brought up a good point. The point my wife brought up is a lot of times when people learn lessons, if someone just tells you a lesson once, that, that usually doesn't work. And especially considering what Raya has been going through, a lot of her trauma with that we, that we the audience have seen her experience, it very much contradicts the message of the film or even the theme of the film. And it would make sense that her character would be resistant to that. So the, re, the, the repetitive nature is just so she could finally succumb or even like submit to uh, and allow that to happen and to humble herself and finally allow trust to take part of her life very much could be. That was something I, I, I enjoy. That's a good observation my wife made. The other thing I thought about too, though, as far as trust is concerned, to just trust someone, what does that require? Uh, especially when trust is lost, that requires forgiveness. I actually thought about it that perhaps the real theme of this is forgiveness. Just because trust has been broken once, that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be permanently broken. And the way to regain that trust is to forgive somebody. So I think maybe that's the real theme of the film is forgiveness and forgiving people from their mistakes, forgiving people for doing things, even intentionally bad things to you. And this story specifically, being uh, an ancient type of mythical tale, it would make sense that they were not subtle about the theme. A lot of uh, kind of ancient uh, tales like this one, or even mythical tales like this one, they're not subtle about what the theme is and they don't need to be. However, like I said, they were so consistent with that. I feel like there's something more there. It actually made me want to watch it again. Or I'm wrong and they were just like, boy, I hope they really get the trust message. <laughs> and quite frankly, considering the the story that's being told, the theme of the message uh, of the film and, and how it relates to the experiences of these characters and just the world that this character that these characters are living in, I think it applies very much to what our world needs now. So I don't mind you just hounding the message over and over again, because maybe all the people who watch it will go, you know what? Perhaps our world, we need to be better at this stuff as well. My score of Ryan the Last Dragon, I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. Wow! I am excited to watch it again when it's not $30 on Disney Plus. Probably may even see this in theaters again. I, I really enjoyed it. It's really good, you know? <laughs> Maybe I'll take my parents to it or something, I don't know. Maybe we can take my wife's parents to it. I don't know, it'd be fun. Fun thing to do. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you so much for watching. If you've seen Ryan the Last Dragon, comment your thoughts on the film below. Do you agree with some of the things I was saying? Is there anything else that you noticed about the film that I failed to mention in this video? Please comment below, start a discussion with me. Thank you so much for watching. Comment, like, subscribe. Bye bye